All righty, good morning everyone. How, how's everyone feeling? Good, good. It's, it's like three o'clock in the morning my time, so you guys are probably feeling a little bit better than I am. But, uh, but I'm certainly happy to be here. Uh, and I always love uh, community events uh, like this and that you, you can always see the, the tight-knit community. And we, we, we talked about this yesterday at dinner that you know, so many people have been here for, for so many years uh, that it's great to see those relationships that are in place. Uh, and that, that obviously means a ton to uh, the DNA community as a whole. But, uh, the first thing that I wanted to do is actually thank the organizers. So can the organizers stand up? So it takes a ton of work, uh, and Declan and I were chat chatting about this yesterday. It takes a ton of work to pull together uh, people uh, you know, a hundred people, you know, to do something like this is pretty, uh, pretty spectacular. And we're, you know, and you end up finding yourself doing a bunch of different things that uh, they didn't even realize you would, like finding people with their cards because they haven't checked in and all that other good jazz. So there's all of this logistics that, that goes in there. So certainly uh, I know the community uh, appreciates that as a whole. Um, and I also wanted to thank the, the community. Uh, so, so I purchased uh, DNN about nine months ago or so. So still, you know, a, a, in, when in, in relation to the people in this room, a baby, literally a baby. Uh, but uh, but I've, I've learned a ton and, and it's been great to be embraced uh, by the community as a whole. I think that, you know, coming into it, there might have been some skepticism on, uh, you know, V2 version and, and what have you and, and no disrespect. But, um, but nonetheless, I think that you know it being a big part of making that transition, it's going to take a while. And I, I respect that, and but as long as we can do, continue to do what we say we're going to do, hopefully we can we can get there together. So um, uh, just a, a little bit about me, since uh, you know um, Peter, you, you had asked me to explain this. So so previously, I was uh, I, I grew up on the engineering side. I was at Intel for 14 years. Uh, I left there to uh, join the U.S. White House for about a year or so, and then I, I did a couple of uh, startups that I, I sold on the medical side, uh, and then actually on the fuel delivery side, believe it or not. Um, since then, uh, I, I, I left there. Uh, I founded a company called Crossover, which is an online talent marketplace. Uh, we're in about 108 different countries. Um, I then, in, uh, in a strange move, uh, started a nonprofit called Ride Austin. Uh, which is a nonprofit version of Uber and Lyft after they got into a bit of a pissing match with the city like they typically do. Um, uh, so that's been great. Uh, we've done about 2.5 million rides to date or so and been able to donate about uh, $350,000 to local charities. Um, uh, I, I purchased a, a company called Engine Yard, which is a um, uh, AWS platform as a service company. Uh, and then D DNN w was, was after that. And I'll talk a lo lot more about you know, kind of the why we, uh, we bought DNN. <laughs> Um, recently bought a, a help desk software called Kayako. Um, I started uh, also uh, semi-recently a, uh, a new uh, private equity fund as a derivative of ESW Capital called Think3, uh, which is about a billion dollar fund to buy additional SaaS companies. Um, and then my most recent purchase was actually last, uh, this, this week, I take that back. So this week we announced it. Uh, which is a company called Business Apps, uh, and what they basically do is they make it easy for they make make it easy for small businesses to uh, actually develop uh, apps. Uh, and then I'm also uh, I'm a board member of uh, the, the Texas uh, Central Rail, which is basically trying to get like you guys have in Europe, trying to get high-speed rail into the U.S., uh, which has been phenomenally difficult in the U.S. for some ridiculous reason, uh, lobbyists in particular. Um, uh, but this is the first private one, so it's going to be interesting going between Dallas and Houston, so it should be great. Uh, and then I also uh, do a bunch with the Japanese community. Uh, I was born in Japan and, um, and I lived there until I was about 13 or so. Uh, so I'm on the U.S.-Japan um, uh, leadership group between the two governments. Uh, and then I also recently start, started a uh, Japanese school in Austin. So uh, these are some of the things that, uh, that I do. Obviously, I spend a decent amount of time on, on DNN as a whole, but it requires great people like Ash and Clint and crew to really keep, uh, uh, keep everything going. So um, real quick on, on who ESW Capital is, since uh, I think, you know, as uh, Peter mentioned yesterday, you guys are like, who the hell is that? And Google that, who bought it? Um, so, uh, so we've purchased, you know, 65 companies or so uh, over the last, you know, 20 years-ish or so, uh, a bunch. Uh, we've actually accelerated that over the last uh, 12 months or so. And, um, and, and unlike other private equity firms who oftentimes lever companies with debt, shine it up to try to go and, and sell it, we do the other way. Uh, we look for companies that we believe are in areas that, uh, that are going to be around 
for the next 10, 20 years. Uh, and then we focus on customer success, which I'll talk more about. And, and we're actually not about necessarily uh, trying to you know, make a big pivot and change with these companies. It's how do we make the current customers successful? And then how do we invest in the product to go make it better? And, uh, and that's our main focus. And therefore, we do a lot of times end up buying companies that have been around for a decade or so that perhaps are, you know, do, do have a great asset, which again, obviously DNN does. Um, and then how do we go make that better? And, and that's kind of our model. And we literally, we, we never sell these companies. Uh, we, we're, our intent is to run them um, and, uh, and run them profitably. Uh, and we run everything at 70% net margin, which is a, you know, uh, obviously a, a large margin uh, model. Uh, but, but we believe that, that ends up being the right investment approach for uh, a lot of these companies. So uh, if you think about the, the typical software company, and this is time and time again whenever we buy these companies, uh, we see this, right? It is, a lot of times it is growth at all costs. Uh, I think Uber is, a, is the best example of this, right? They lost $2.7 billion last year, I think it was, right? And it is investment and growth, and it's the old dot-com days, more or less. And, but a lot of times these companies are not in the dot-com world. They're not uh, racing towards an IPO and what have you. So basically they're, they're burning uh, good money to go after, you know, potentials. Uh, Intel was a, another good classic example of this, right? Where we, we had a great and have a great microprocessor business. It, you know, in the server business where we have 99% market share, they actually have about 95% margins, believe it or not. Uh, but they take all that cash and then they go dump it into drones and we bought McAfee for seven billion and sold it for four, which turns out that's bad. Um, so, uh, so we see this time and time again in this focus on growth, uh, and then, you know, again, a distant second is a, f a focus on profit, and, and unfortunately, a distant third is then the focus on customer success. Uh, and uh, they're basically like, I'm all about new customers, and they spend 80% of their time on, on new customers as opposed to spending 80% of their time with current customers. Uh, and we fundamentally think that that is a, a mistake if you want to run a, a great company uh, over time. So we invert that. Um, where, again, it is all about customer success is the first part of it. And, you know, one of the first things that, that we do, and same, same deal with one of the first things we did with DNN, is we go and talk to the customers. They're like, hey, what are all the things that are jacked up? And let's talk through those, and let's see what we can fix and what we can't fix, and then let's go invest in the underlying platform to go and, and make it great. And, um, and then we focus on profitability, and the, and the third is, is the growth. Uh, we're not not focused on growth, uh, but it's certainly in the stack rank. Uh, if we believe that fundamentally, if you, if you have happy customers, that will drive growth uh, versus trying to convince new customers uh, to go jump onto the platform. So, so that's kind of our model. And uh, let me talk a little bit about uh, DNN, because I led up the initiative basically within ESW to, to buy DNN. Uh, and uh, and I, I still think that uh, even nine months in, I do think that it, it was still the right direction. <laughs> I guess we'll see it in another uh, nine months as we were talking about it dinner. But, but I, I, I'm, I'm still a big, big believer in, in DNN. And um, so I looked at this space, and, and I'm a big fan of investing in spaces that, again, I, I believe that will exist for the next 10 years. Uh, and there's no world in my mind that the, you know, the, the platform, that the CMS side of the world, that, that isn't going to exist in 10 years. Um, you know, obviously there's tons of competition. You've got, you know, the, uh, the, the site cores, the Adobe's and others at, at, the, at the high end, and then you've got the, the low end, uh, which is, of course, disrupting with a bunch of their free, you know, cheap stuff. That is actually pretty good. Uh, and so DNN currently kind of lives in that, that middle space. Um, and I think that it's, uh, you know, it, it, it has the opportunity, but you, you, can't, you can't just live in that middle space either. Um, but the asset that I, that I thought was awesome is the fact that it is based on an open source model, and that is unique. I mean, other than the uh, you know the, the Linux side of the world, if you are a .NET house, there's no world why you shouldn't be uh, on the the DNN platform. So I love the investment in that, and I think that the the V1 folks that that are here, I think did a, did a great job on that side of the world, uh, and and even the V2 world to uh, to go and enhance that, and and that is a unique asset that you don't see uh, anywhere. Uh, I see a bunch of different CMSs come across my desk and what have you, and they're like, oh, you can consolidate it in, or whatever else it may be, and, uh, but it's, it's irrelevant, guys. It's not actually strategic. The CMS itself isn't strategic. It's the rest of what goes on that makes DNN great, and that's a, a big part of this, um, as well as a, as a big part of the community. 
right, is that, you know, you look at the, the community that's been developed over time, and obviously, you know, you guys do an amazing job here in Europe continuing this, uh, but that's, that is a big part of the asset. And, uh, and you look at uh, other CMSs out there, they, they, they don't have that. Uh, they may have some, some resellers, but they don't really have the, the full open source world, uh, the folks that are developing on top of the platform, it's not necessarily extensible, and, and they're, you know, they're just resellers versus you know, our ability to go and, and make great things happen. And, uh, and I view this as, as an incredible asset, uh, and uh, I thought that it was actually undervalued uh, when, when looking at, at DNN as a whole. The other thing that I, that, I, uh, that I believed, and I think that Satya has done a, a great job here, is that Microsoft has kind of gone through a bit of a sine wave also, right? Obviously massively popular with the whole Wintel world, uh, fell completely out of favor, uh, extreme out of favor with uh, the rise of iOS and Android and others. Um, and like literally, there was no kid out there that ever wanted to develop on the .NET framework anymore. Uh, but it's come back. And uh, I believe that it's, it's come back largely on the back of Satya versus uh, Balmer and, and Gates, um, in that he's, he's had a very different view of the world, right? The, one of the first things that he did was embrace kind of a cross-platform view, uh, looking at uh, how do I embrace iOS, Android, and others? How do I, you know, go to the cloud? I mean, if, if I would have guessed who would have made the transition to the cloud better, Intel or Microsoft? Uh, you know, even though I lived in Intel before, I would have bet on Intel. Um, but it really, Microsoft did, right? Who would have thought that they were like, hey, you know what, we're gonna give OSs for free, right? And that was like literally their bread and butter, like we're gonna give that away for free. And then their cash cow, they're like, hey, we're gonna start putting Office in the cloud and we're just gonna do a subscription-based model, right? I mean, these are huge shifts that you could imagine how many times that they had to talk about it over and over, but it, I, don't, I don't think that it would have been done w without Satya in there. And, uh, and I believe as a result, you, you do see that Microsoft is back. Uh, and I believe that, you know, when, when you look at the second N of, of our name, I mean, that, that matters. And therefore, with that community coming back, I believe that there is a tremendous opportunity to go and, and make that change happen. Um, however, uh, DNN is not back yet, in my mind. Uh, I, I do believe that, you know, when, particularly when you look at uh, this next chart here, right, this is basically just a uh, Google searches over time. Right, and you see obviously kind of a 04, it's starting and, and it, it peaking up in the 06 time period, and then you know, this, this long tail down this way. And I think that you guys have inherently felt this too, right? Where you, you, there was a lot of interest early on, uh, a lot of excitement, Microsoft uh, had your back, and then, uh, then it's declined uh, over time. Now, you could look at that bubble, right, and say, is that legacy uh, or, or is it an asset? And, and in my view, again, uh, as, because you can actually look at the Microsoft curve and it looks very similar to this, which maybe I'll, I'll chart next time. Um, and Microsoft has come back, as I've, as I mentioned, and I, I, don't, I don't believe there's any reason that holds the DNA community back. Because there's, if there's one thing that I've learned over the last nine months is that there's tons of passion uh, in the DNN community. Right, I mean, uh, you know, it, it is extreme passion sometimes. <laughs> uh, but I love that, because passion means that it's not indifference. Right? It means that you know, you, you, there's still people that, that care about the community, that still want to make it grow, that still monetize it. Because I mean, at the end of the day, if, if we're not all uh, out there monetizing it, then uh, it, it also doesn't work either. Now, again, on this other end of it, um, we have to turn this around, right? In that uh, there has to be interest out there in the, in the again, the, the value, as I mentioned, in, in DNN from, from our side too, is the fact that it is the community and it is that network going out there. Otherwise, literally, when you look at the multiples of other CMSs that are out there, they're, they're like free. They're, those companies are like free. Um, so, uh, so this is a case where we have something, and, and I don't know whether or not we can turn it around or not, right? And that's my honest belief, is that I, I believe that if there is a time, it is the time to do it now. I mean, Microsoft is, is roaring back. Uh, the, the, the need isn't going away. The community is still here. Uh, but at some point, the community atrophies and the community goes away and people, and, and you guys have, have seen this, right? Where, where we have to do this now and there's a lot of steps that I believe that we can go and take to go and, and make that happen. And a lot of that actually does start uh, from, from our side, right? Well, I do believe that, again, I've got a lot of respect for the, the people that, that made uh, DNN, um, but I do believe that there's been mistakes made on how to manage the community, right? And, and Ash and I have talked about this. I mean. Uh, it was all about segmentation, 
right? And, you know, and I, I'm completely fine with segmentation, uh, but segmentation has to be done in a way where it's not neglecting the main volume, which is the platform. It's also not neglecting the, the community members that actually monetize the, the rest of the platform. So the platform actually needs to drive, and then the segmentation needs to occur after that, versus the other way around, which is, hey, uh, let's drive the segmentation, and let's just make sure that you know, the platform's got a few things in there. Right? And so I believe that that inversion is really, really important. And it, and it takes us from the DNN Corp perspective to really have that mentality and to nourish the community to go and make that reality. Uh, because again, if that goes away, then, uh, then the value is, is near zero and then that curve will, will never turn around. And that's why I, I, I'm as passionate about it, uh, the community um, as I am. Um, but, it's, but it's hard. Right, and where you know, I, I, you know, I've had a lot of conversations in the community, and there, there is a lot of, of passion, uh, as I mentioned, but there's also a lot of skepticism. Right? Can we do it? It's, it is really hard. I don't know if we can do it or not. Um, but the best that we can do is put together a plan, pull together the, the people, empower the people in the community to go and make those decisions, and then, and then assist. Right? This isn't a case where, and I, and I know that you know, I've, I've been asked, like, hey, no, I, you know, we need DNN to do X, Y, or Z. I'm like, guys, no, we are intentionally going to stand back and, and let the community make the decisions and roll with it. And even if some of those decisions aren't actually great for uh, the business, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm rolling with it, guys, because I want the community to feel like you know, they are a community, that they can actually make decisions and go with it. But the community does have to make the decisions. If it is a, uh, a bunch of people sitting around pontificating about whatever and not making decisions, then that's never going to work either. Um, so we have to be able to be in a position where we have those uh, honest conversations, but the actions have to follow it. Um, and it is, again, going to take all of us to go do it. Um, and, and, the, and the time is now. Uh, it, I, we can't wait another five years, I don't believe. I mean, that, that curve eventually uh, goes to zero, and it's really hard to pull out the paddles when something's at zero. Uh, at least if there's some pulse, you, you, can, you can revive, uh, and, you know, and what have you, and, and make the patient healthy again. Um, and again, I'm not saying that the, the, there's obviously tons of great value that are in collective end customers, because I know that there's, there's a lot of integrators and what have you in there. There's obviously tons of value that they are currently getting out of the platform, and, and there's a long tail on that. Right, where I don't believe that all of our customers are suddenly going to say, great, I'm going to switch to WordPress or Sitecore and things like that. So, so that will be there. The question will simply be, you know, what's after that? Is that are we just, should we just live in a you know, declining world and, 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 and that's fine if that's the way that it is? Or do we believe that we can go take that front to zero uh, to positive? And uh, it makes a significant difference on the, you know, the, the area under that curve, if, even if it's flat versus declining. So the question is, is, is how do we go get there? So, um, again, this, this is uh, uh, my view of what it takes to revive communities. Uh, we, we've done this uh, at, at Intel in the past, and these are some of the, the key learnings that, that I've had, as well as in talking to a lot of folks here. So, the first thing comes with trust. If the community doesn't have trust, and they, they believe that there are alternative motives, or they don't believe that there's a, a, a direct line of honest communication, then there is no community. All right, by definition, it doesn't matter if you're talking about a village uh, or if you're talking about a community like DNN. That level of trust has to be there. And the good news is that I think that we have uh, started to rebuild that, but I also know that uh, it does take a while. Right? I mean, trust isn't regained immediately, uh, but I think by having those open, honest conversations, I think that's a, a big part of it. And uh, I think that that's first and foremost on what has to be there. The second thing that has to be there is that uh, you can... Uh, you can bring on new members and what have you, but if you're, if you're declining at a, at a rate that is uh, as faster than you're filling in the top, then the, the boat, boat is still going to sink. Uh, so we have to make sure that, that our partners as well as our customers are well taken care of. Uh, you guys are all talking to end customers, of course, that are asking you questions. Hey, sh should, I, should I get off this DNN thing? Should I go invest in something else? And we have to be out there with customers saying, no, great, no, uh, we believe that there is a future and that we believe that this is the way that, uh, that the future is going to be, and then go create that future. Because, again, you have to, to stem, the, stem that, that tide, otherwise uh, it doesn't work. As well as the monetization element of it, where uh, if the partners aren't making money, I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for open source and what have you, but, but this isn't a, a bunch of people wearing t-shirts and, and jeans and you know, doing hackathons for the hell of it. I mean, there's, monetization has to occur. 
And, uh, and I believe that all the partners, whether you're, whether you're doing modules, whether you're doing integration, whether you're doing resale, that has to all be there. Uh, and it all comes through de delivering that value to the customer, of course. Um, the, the, the third one is, is, is the ability to contribute. And uh, so w when I got into DNN, we had, I want to say, you know, 60 or 70 pull requests, for example, that were sitting there, sometimes for years, uh, without actually any action. And if you're a community member and you're working hard and you're, you're banging away a bunch of code and you submit it in and it sits there for years, what are the odds that you're going to do it again? Right? It's, uh, so you have to make sure that the community is, is empowered and can ensure that they, they feel like they can contribute. And I think if there's one lesson or one thing that you, you should take away from this is that we absolutely uh, believe that the, the community contribution is tr uh, super important and that we will absolutely take action on that. Um, but we also ensure that all, all players do have to increase the monetization. I kind of mentioned this a little bit in number two, but um, also steady state uh, on, a, uh, on a declining TAM uh, also isn't a great business if you guys are looking to invest. Right? So, so how do you actually increase that? And what, what are the creative ways can we go out there and offer different types of plans, offer different, different types of, of extensions to the platform to enable various folks? to do that type of monetization. Because at the end of the day, if, if the players aren't making money, then that doesn't, uh, doesn't actually work. It all, of course, again, revolves around that end user success, that end user value proposition, because there's no monetization if none of that occurs. Uh, and that those end users that you guys are speaking to, of course, drive everything. Um, the other uh, point is that we are, the, the second end, again, matters. And as the .NET community continues to reemerge, uh, we have to be super active. Uh, like, I, I love these types of community events and what have you, but it's basically a bunch of people that are super familiar with DNN talking to a bunch of other people that are super familiar with DNN, right? which is great. Uh, have be I, I, having beers yesterday was great and what have you. Uh, but unless you can expand that denominator of, of people that are familiar with it, uh, there is no revival. Uh, and it's just, you know, you're, you're literally on a fixed TAM of, of people that are actually going away. So uh, the .NET community, if you, if you go, you know, it's, it's been really interesting to go to a bunch of these different .NET uh, events over time, and they went through that same wave too. And, but now, like, people are excited. People are talk, uh, excited to talk about all the things that Microsoft is doing and, and cloud and others, and we need to basically uh, draft behind that because it is super important. Because when you look at even that the first um, area, uh, that big area under curve, as you guys know, I mean, it was behind Microsoft. And uh, when you look at what's actually even occurring within the Microsoft platforms today with SharePoint going away and others, it's a tremendous opportunity for us to stand and get in there and, uh, and be relevant uh, within that community. Um, but in order to do that you know, and to drive that excitement, you, you have to replenish the players. Right? Uh, all uh, ecosystems, all communities have a, a natural negative slope. You know, people, you know, they move jobs or they get a different job or they, they um, you know, they shut down their company, whatever it may be, um, there's always this negative slope. And, and when you, and we were talking about this yesterday, it's like when you look across the room, like we're not all, we're not getting younger either. <laughs> no, no offense to the uh, folks here. But, you know, so if you can't bring in new developers that are excited to, to jump on top of the platform, then, you know, that, then as the, the, the current passionate players go away, there's, there's no one in coming in on the other end. And in order to do that, you have to, uh, you have to be on the modern technology. There's no kid that's coming out of this uh, university, for example, that is currently like, oh, I want to go develop on top of the DNN platform. Right? And that's a mistake. Right? They're all like, hey, I want to go uh, iOS, Android, you name it. Right? But there are a bunch of people also doing Linux, by the way. People are coming out of here doing Linux. So, uh, so there's no reason why, uh, and there's obviously a bunch of people doing .NET now. So there's no reason why we can't, but it's not if we're doing a bunch of web forms and a bunch of archaic stuff, right? We have to be able to jump onto the latest generation, and we have to make sure that the platform is cool and sexy and there's great use cases for it. And that kind of gets to this last part, which is uh, without Microsoft uh, really backing the platform and really out there aggressively pushing it, it you know, we can do our best and we can swing for it. Uh, but we have to literally have the 500-pound gorilla behind us, um, it, you know, and, uh, and I believe that, that they will if we can align it to their interests. 
And I don't know whether it, that's, you know, it is uh, .NET Core, which we've talked a lot about, or, or something else. But nonetheless, uh, we as a community need to really figure that out with Microsoft. And I know that uh, you know, with Mitch and others, there's, there's been conversations uh, in this space. But we have to basically figure that out. Because if, if we can't get Microsoft excited about DNN again and pushing it in their forums and having you know, community members stand up on stage at their various events and what have you, uh, then, then, then they can, you can never drive the awareness up. And there's you know, no one from TechCrunch that's going to be doing a DNN article anytime soon. Right? But if you're on stage and you're showing how this new platform is easily extensible and, and you know, an easy way to take advantage of X, Y, or Z, then all of a sudden you can get that momentum back and get new people into the platform. And then that will, that's a self-fulfilling prophecy where then the platform has more new developers. You know, they submit code, make it easier, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, and it's a positive loop. But all of these things, in my opinion, are, are necessary to revive the community. And we basically have to make a decision on whether or not we're willing to, to do these things or not. Uh, I, can, I can, without a doubt, tell you from the uh, DNN Corp perspective, we are absolutely willing to put the resources behind to go and make this happen. But I believe that this is largely a community-driven effort. Right? I, I, I don't believe that if DNN Corp just stood up and said, okay, we're going to go do a bunch of this stuff and what have you, uh, I still believe that the community atrophies uh, at that point because it's not a community-driven thing. You know, for any of you guys that, that have kids, it's like, you know, you guys have been there. That's like telling kids w what to do and, and what have you, and then they resist it versus it making it feel like it, it, you know, it is their idea and they drive it, right? And it's, it's the same deal, right? Where like in all these, these models where like it's, it, if, it, it's got to be bottoms up driven uh, and then the community has to, has to do it holistically and then with our support. And I'm more than happy to leverage uh, any of my, my contacts at Microsoft, but obviously you guys have a ton too. And like we need to go figure it out. Um, and, and one of the, 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 the reasons why, you know, uh, within the first, I guess, uh, 60 days of, of being in the DNM world, is that I put together the, the ecosystem advisory group. Uh, and I did this because it felt like, uh, you know, there are great leaders actually in the community. And I want to make sure that you know, there, there was a, a way to bring everyone together to make decisions uh, along those uh, areas that are, that are really, really important. And, and the reason was that it, there was previous, of course, as the, the core group, and there was a bunch of MVP, there was a bunch of different names that, that were in the past. Um, but even then, it, it was you know, a, a small set of people that, um, that made decisions. There were other people that were outside of that, uh, that group that you know, wanted to be in that group, but didn't feel like they were empowered. So uh, I wanted this to be a little bit more uh, inclusive uh, as a whole. And uh, you guys know some of these folks, perhaps. Um, uh, so, so we reached out uh, to the community and said, hey, who would be the best people to go in, and drive these four areas uh, that, again, uh, I, I consider to be super important. So obviously, you know, with Mr. Poindexter on the, on the partner uh, side of the world, you know, the partners are, they, they have to be there. If you don't have a, a, a great partner community, a, a great channel, a great reseller, great integrator program, then uh, unfortunately, even if you did a bunch of the other things, again, that, that, that means the monetization isn't there. So all of that has to be in place. Of course, you have to drive the awareness because all of this, you know, if you do a bunch of all these great things and, and no one knows about it, then uh, it, it is literally the adage of the, the, you know, does anyone hear a tree falling in the forest? So it's a will there. Uh, the developer side of the world, which, uh, of course, uh, Peter, um, super important, right? Because right now, uh, A, the, the kids aren't developing on top of the DNM platform. But B, like, you know, before, uh, you know, Peter really took, took all the, the there weren't like the API documentation was, wasn't very good. Uh, the tools to actually get started weren't very good. Uh, there was a great story by Ash that was he was teaching his kid how to code on top of the DNA platform. And he was like, what a pain in the ass. Like literally, there's no documentation. <laughs> there's, there's no anything. And like if the, if the VP of engineering can't like get it all going, like who the hell is going to figure it out? So ensuring that all that's in place is super important, again, as you re replenish that. Because there, there are a lot of great things that you can build on top of the platform as a whole. And obviously, CMS is, is one element of it. But there's a tons of other things that you can build on top of it. And, then the, and, and on the technology side, um, uh, you know, I, I think that um, you know, we got a good friend up there. Uh, <laughs> the, um, so uh, and, and Mitch is doing a great job here. And, and I think that. Uh, you know, again, we have to make some decisions on the technology side of what we're going to do. And there's some hard ones that we have to make, right? Do we do a, you know, hard fork 
uh, like we were t talking about uh, on the ASP.NET and leaving a bunch of customers behind. Is that actually what Microsoft cares about? You know, what are the different things that we want to do at the, at the platform level to make sure that it's optimized for cloud and others? Right? And, so, uh, and how do we you know, make sure that, I, I'm fine with, again, with segmentation, obviously, but, uh, but there, there has, the, the core platform has to also be great. And so what, how do we go and make sure that, um, that we don't do, do dumb stuff that, um, that, that drives the, the poor behavior in the platform to atrophy? Because again, if that, again, as I mentioned, if, if that core boat isn't awesome, then all the things you build on top of it are irrelevant. So you know, even things like the, the data structure model, Right? I mean, like, you know, I think that we call it liquid content or something. All that really means is it's, it's the right data structure model, right? So, you know, we don't have to say we're bringing all liquid content down and maybe there's some other features up there, whatever it is, Siri or whatever the hell it is. Um, but, like, how you handle the data, you know, and, and making sure that's uh, oh, intelligently done, it should be across everything, right? Same deal with cloud, right? Like, in what world do you develop nowadays where, you know, you don't have a great cloud offering? So, so making these decisions, but most importantly, you know, really understanding, and this is the piece that, where the Microsoft side comes in, where really understanding, you know, what is it that will excite them so that we can go and, and deliver that uh, and make that happen. And even if it is some hard decisions, I'm actually, without a doubt, willing to, to make uh, some of the sacrifices on the revenue side within DNA Corp to ensure that the, that the platform succeeds. All right. So let me uh, transition a little bit here to um, kind of looking forward you know, in the 2018 time period and, and, and beyond, and kind of the way that, that, that I see the world. And I've talked a lot about this, but in general, and I think that you've, you've, you've seen this, uh, I believe in a, a smaller DNN and a larger community, right? Where uh, I'm happy to, to increase DNN Corp uh, from a size perspective uh, in, the, in the future, but, uh, but I would rather invest the dollars into the community because I believe that having a big DNN corp in a small community, like literally the, the value goes, goes to uh, near zero. So all the things that, that you're gonna hear from my side as well as Ash and others is to go and make that happen. That's of course why we brought Clint on, who you guys all know well, is to go and, and make that happen. Um, and, uh, and, we're gonna, and, and we've been living true to that, um, as well as uh, living true to kind of doing the things that we said that we're gonna do. Now it's only been nine months, so you know, we got, uh, you know, but I guess we can make babies in, in nine months. But, uh, but uh, there's, there's obviously, you know, some steps we've, we've, we've done uh, on the ecosystem advisory group, of course, forming that. We, we've joined the, the .NET Foundation. We've executed on the, on the pull requests. Uh, we've open sourced the, the, the framework. Um, we've, uh, I don't know if people have noticed this, but we also modified the dnn.com uh, website uh, because previously it wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a community site at all, right? It was an evoke site. Um, and, and then there was like this other community area. So we, we uh, you know, I, and, and the whole thing needs a revamp. But what I wanted to do was just do something quick and let's just change the wording. Jesus, just change the wording to like say, hey, this is DNN as a whole. And then, oh, by the way, there's some other products and what have you. But at least just doing some, something small like that, where if you don't know anything about uh, DNN, you come, you, you, you realize that it is much bigger than just a, a Vogue product itself. So we, we quick, quickly did that. You know, we need to do uh, even more there, uh, as well as do more with the store. Uh, I think that the store is, it was outdated and terrible, right? And particularly in the, in the days of the um, app store world, like it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, as well as, a, a, you know, we spent a decent amount of time revamping our partner program, as well as, you know, on our side, putting together a, a strong customer success team that's calling up all of the end users, the top customers, uh, and saying, hey, you know, what is it that you like and what is it that you don't like and how do we go make that happen? So, um, and again, getting back to the, that first part on, on community trust, it, it does come down to doing what we say that we're going to do. And I know that there's a, a, a list, uh, uh, you know, 10,000 long that we got to do, but, you know, I, I just want to systematically ensure that, you know, we're doing what we say we're going to do, and, and we go out and do that, because that is how you, you rebuild that trust. Um, uh, I'm not going to go through all of the, the latest release of the features on the platform side or the Vogue side. Uh, I think Ash is going to be covering some of that, so I'll skip over that. But um, you'll also see me push on less uh, feature train and more uh, technical debt removal. Um, I, I'm not a big believer that the reason why the DNN platform is where it is is because we're missing a bunch of features. Uh, I, just don't, I just don't believe that that's the case. Um, I, I believe there's a bunch of underlying things such as the data structure, you know, optimization around mobile, optimization around cloud that, that need to be there before we start thinking about what's the new latest little widget that we can add into it. 
Um, and um, I do also believe in this element, which is w w out of the shoot, at least, we're not going to go conquer all of these various corporations and what have you. There might be s some that, that we can go out there, but the people that really drive the, the business are people that care about open source or care about .NET. Right? And, and those are the main areas that, that we really focus on from a corp perspective in our sales and marketing efforts. But uh, you know, even just when I think about the roadmap and the investment, you know, so government, EDU, obviously places that, that care a lot about open source. There's obviously a lot of companies uh, out there that care about the .NET world. And in my view, that is that if they are a .NET house and they have a bunch of .NET developers, like there's no world why they shouldn't be on DNN. So these are the areas that, that we're going to continue to focus on on our side of the world. And, and even when, you, when it comes to the, even the new features that we do uh, end up doing, uh, it is, you know, in my view, kind of around these spaces on uh, people that, that care about that community. So, uh, you know, on the roadmap focus areas, right, again, as I mentioned, like, we have to reduce the technical debt. We have to look at the, the next generation of, of developers and say, how do we go and, and ensure that that's all in place uh, on the real architecture perspective and, uh, and what have you. Um, keep the pull requests coming because uh, we will continue to, you know, do the, the validation around that and, and insert them into the platform. And uh, I think we were talking about this yesterday, too, um, where uh, I'm also a big fan of, of having community betas out there. Right, that, that aren't necessarily you know, through the main model where the community actually even validates it through and what have you. So uh, I think Sebastian and I were, were chatting about that uh, uh, last night. Um, I, I do believe that um, all of the new developer-friendly features on make sure Ash's son can get up and going are really important. So, uh, so I'm a big fan of, of, of ensuring that that gets in place. Um, I, again, as I mentioned, the, the store has to be revamped. Uh, there's a lot of monetization that, uh, that occurs through the store, uh, and, and if that's not done, and I know that there's a lot of, of folks that I've, I've spoken to uh, that have their own module, that was like, why the hell would I put it on the store? Right? I'm just gonna you know, sideload it, more or less. Uh, you're like, right, okay, well that doesn't actually help for the overall community, right? And like, how do we go do that? And, and I'm not interested in monetizing the store. Uh, I'm not interested in building an, an, you know, whatever, an Apple-like model that, uh, that they take a 30% cut of the revenue and what have you. Like that, that, my view is that the store is, is, a, is a means in which people can go and, and extend their, their platforms. So, uh, so we need to make sure that, that, that A, it's usability is there to go make that happen, but then B, uh, I'm, I'm happy to look at all of the, you know, whatever it takes to run the store and just kind of pass that through. Um, Talked a little about the Gov and EDU features, and then again, I know that uh, some of the folks get concerned about cloud because, hey, my customers are on-prem, and how would I support them, and things like that. But th there's no world that cloud isn't going to continue to go up into the right. So if we don't collectively have a of a great strategy here, then you know, guys, we're, we're you know we're we're we're, we're, we're betting on the wrong wrong boat. So uh, those are the areas that when I when I push Ash and crew on the on the feature roadmap, this is what what I look for. But also. You know, when I think about the community uh, and the platform roadmap as a whole, these are the things that, in my mind, that with Mitch and crew, I think that we have to really be thinking about and, and what uh, needs to be in place here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to finish up here uh, with, with something else that I, I think is going to be interesting for this uh, community uh, as a whole, particularly those that uh, have resellers and integrators, is that it's something that we call the Prime Program. And, uh, and basically what it is, uh, and this is, this is going to uh, continue to expand over time, is that whenever I buy additional companies, um, current customers get to use all of that software for free. And uh, I think of it like a Netflix model um, or an Amazon Prime model, where you know, Netflix is a good example where you know, you're willing to pay the 10 bucks a month or, or what have you, because there's a catalog of different movies in there that you, you don't like all the movies and they may all, all be relevant for you, but there's enough in there that you can click on a bunch of them and, and, and you like it and, and you maintain your subscription model. And, uh, and I view um, the incremental cost to add on another customer on any of my, my software is, is near zero, uh, but the value to that end customer is incredibly high. If they can replace, say, Zendesk that they're paying whatever 50 or 100 grand a year for and replace it with Kayako, which is a um, help desk software that uses chat. Or if, um, you know, if, if they're currently paying uh, for a, a mobile app development uh, house and they're you know, going to pay 50 grand for that you know, for whatever, 250 bucks a month, you can do business apps, which has got basically templated apps and you drag and drop and it doesn't uh, require much. And, and you guys actually, even as uh, the integrator crew, can just use that and, to create more apps for them. 
So, uh, and then this will continue to grow over time, and NGRD is, is hosting and what have you. Um, and this will continue to grow over time. So I'm gonna buy another $650 million worth of companies this year, another billion next year, right? So you can imagine that this portfolio of various uh, products that are gonna be uh, available to your customers uh, will continue to grow over time. And they can literally use it, as long as they are customers, you know, in this case, paying customers, <laughs> um, uh, they can use any of the other software uh, for free. And, uh, and there's, you know, we can go into more details if, if you guys are interested, but I, I did want to at least bring this up uh, because I think that this is also something that we can hopefully bring together as, as part of the additional value. Hey, if you're a DNN customer, you know, here are a bunch of different uh, other things that you guys can get. And you can have those discussions with your customers that get them excited to, to stay as part of the DNN uh, platform and, uh, and, and community. And, um, and then because they're offering additional value. So while we're you know, in the process of restarting a bunch of other things, like let's, let's just go buy a bunch of stuff and they give it to them and say, hey, use this and you can save 50, 100, 100 grand or what have you. And, uh, and again, the reason that I do this is, is really, uh, it isn't for cross-sell, because obviously I'm, I'm not cross-selling. Um, it, it's actually, it's for retention, because I'm a big believer that if, if a customer is using you know, two, three of your products, uh, the odds of them canceling all of that is, is much, much less than just canceling the one. So, you know, so if we can add onto this portfolio and uh, continue to do that, then I think that there's tremendous value. So uh, happy to talk more about that for sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, as I mentioned here, Segmentation, at least in the near term, is not my focus, right? I, I obviously, I have an evoked business uh, that we're going to continue to to grow and make sure that those customers are well taken care of and what have you. Um, but it, it's not to go drive more uh, segmentation in that particular case. It is, uh, you know, get the boat underneath it, awesome, and get new developers on it, what have you, and then uh, and then I'm happy to go drive additional segmentation. Uh, after that. Uh, the new developers are a big part of that, so Peter's got a lot on his plate to go make this reality. But if you don't have the replenishment of players uh, and new people coming in and develop on top of the platform, then, 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 it's, then it's dead. Right. So, so that, that absolutely has to be there. Microsoft, of course, is the key because they are and they have been able to get new developers back onto the .NET world. Uh, we need to draft behind that and, and create a right uh, tech model to go make that happen. And, it, and it's all of us. Right, again, Shay, I am intentionally, even though I would like to go in and make a bunch of decisions uh, on, on some of this, I'm intentionally uh, stepping back and letting the community go and, and make the decisions and what have you. Because I think it is important, because we have to, you know, I, I think in the V1 world, I think the community made a bunch of decisions, and it was awesome. In the V2 world, I think a lot of that decision-making authority was removed, and then to, you know, and then to, you, just bringing it back, sometimes it takes a little while for people to realize they can make the decisions and what have you, uh, but, but, and, and therefore it, 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 we have to intentionally be back uh, from a DNM corp perspective in order to let the uh, community do that, otherwise the community will always you know, kind of go back towards what was the case over the last n number of years. Uh, and it is, it's all of ours, right? I and mean, we're all in this together, where, where we all are passionate about this to make it a uh, reality. You know, again, I'm, I'm new in the community, but I, I do fundamentally believe that, you know, that it's, it's such a unique asset that we can go and, and and make even more special than, than it is today. And I think that, that uh, it's a tremendous opportunity, but it takes all of us to do it. And, uh, you know, and, and without all of us doing it, you know, it, will, it will just go on its negative decline. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm an optimist. Uh, I know some of the European folks in the room may not be uh, optimist. <laughs> we were talking about like, um, But I'm an optimist, uh, and, and I believe that, that we can actually get it there. Uh, it, it's been done before. You can look at a lot of different communities in the past. It's, it's super hard to do, um, but I'm an optimist and I believe that we can do it. And I believe, but I do believe that the window though is now. And I believe that if, if we don't actually uh, do it now, then, then, you know, then, then we should just stop and we should just be honest about it and say we're gonna stop. Um, but uh, I don't believe we're there yet. And uh, I'm, I'm optimistic and uh, we'll see what happens. So, so again, uh, thanks for your time. And uh, I'm around uh, all weekend, so uh, let, let me know, and I'm happy to sit down and chat and, uh, and be honest, so thanks.